Sawe Magister Yonker. This is my um, this is my Latin project about the mausoleum at Halicarnassus. Um, I have some graphics. This is a picture of the of what's left, and this is, was a picture in its heyday. So here's some background. So the mausoleum at Halicarnassus, it was a burial chamber for Mausolus, who was a leader of Caria, which was in the then south southwestern Asia Minor. It was placed in the in his capital city, which he changed from a previous city. He it was called Halicarnassus, and it was around 353 to 350 and 351 BCE, placed by his sister and widow Artemisia, Artemisia II. Uh, the structure was planned by the two Greek architects, Pythias and Sateros. Pythias' name was actually quite debated on often, and people genuinely wonder if that was his real name, because in depending on the translations and how obscure of a person he was, it's different. So it was one of the seven ancient wonders of the world, which are some of the most impressive architectural creations of all time. And it was very much so like, it was adorned with these super intricate statues and decorations and all sorts of gold and super fancy stuff. Um, unfortunately, it was destroyed at one point by, uh, historians think that it was an earthquake, but we really genuinely have no idea. But one thing that is known is that for a little bit, it was put to purpose as a fortress. Um, most likely under the uh, while while Alexander the Great uh, was con was attempting to conquer and successfully conquered Halicarnassus. So this is my slide about who this mausoleum was for. It was built for Mausolus, which, in case you didn't know, ma the word mausoleum was named after him. Uh, it means a an above ground tomb, and it was built specifically for him catered and it was very similar in a sense to that of the great pyramids in a sense that it was it was both it was a mausoleum as well as the great pyramids and both were very very intricate and unique and detailed structures um mausolus was known for many many important things he was a greek king of, the, of his city state uh Halicarnassus. he got the power from his father hecatomnus um, and he got a lot of his wealth. He was a very, very, he was very interested in, how do you say, the finer things in life. He loved gold and marble and fancy wine, and he was known for his lavish lifestyle, albeit there, there's not much noting about uh, the parties that he threw. Um, I have a little thing that says about his decadent palace made out of gold and marble. Oh, can't forget, I have some graphics coming up on the screen. Boom. <laughs> All right, so this is what? So we are speaking about the mausoleum itself, which was an immense structure. It was gigantic, and it was very much so built to reflect the life and the lifestyle and how he really took a grip of his life and everything that he did um, of mausoleus, of course. Um, his decadence and impressive endeavors are very, you can see them in each of the intricate elements of the building. You can see all the super intricate statues and on top there was actually a chariot and it was like, it was a double chariot with golden horses on it and there was 143 pillars built around it, which was a huge feat at the time considering this was more than 2300 years ago. It's very impressive, and it had a tiered design, which was unique to that of other raised, uh, that of other raised tombs. Uh, the city around it was very unique, very beautiful, good life, a good place to live, honestly, and it had many beautiful buildings in it and structures, um, all that to reflect the life and li livelihood of Mr. Mausolus. I have a little thing, uh, a little speaker. That's the, one of the architects, that's Pythias up there, talking about how he uh, 
he built, he designed exactly half of it, like mirrored. It was quite impressive, actually. So, where? So this this place, the the mausoleum was in Bodrum, Turkey, and the ruins of this massive mausoleum are still there, actually, almost twenty, almost two thousand years ago at this point. So the city used to be called Halicarnassus and was a large city. It was a Greek city state, and it was the capital of of um, of Mausolus's empire. And so something unique about Halicarnassus is it had a monarchical arrangement of government when most other Greek city-states and smaller nations had since abandoned this and they moved on and freed themselves of their kings and adopted a more Athenian uh, dem democracy. Um, so their Ionian neighbors opposed the Persian standard However, Halicarnassus wanted to keep the, their Persian roots and stayed faithful and held on to a very small piece of the Persian Empire until Alexander the Great captured it at the attack of Halicarnassus in 334 BC. That relates back to when I was speaking about how they turned it into a fortress. It's speculated that they converted it into that battle, battle station while Alexander the Great was capturing the city in an attempt to hold them off. And you can see little, that's Alexander the Great speaking about how he captured the city. All right, so when? So this mausoleum was built between about 353 and 50, 351 BCE. And these numbers are very debated on because truly we do not know because most of the records of this structure have long been lost to time. So, but one thing we ha are much more sure of is that it was de demolished by an earthquake between the 11th and 15th century. And the stones the on from the building were reused in, in nearby buildings and structures. And this has led to a lot of the buildings in Bodrum to still hold up this very archaic and ancient sort of look because some of the stones are still in the buildings in the local neighborhood to the where the mausoleum was because people just picked up rocks and put them in their house so i have some graphics just so you can see that's a little time loop clock some bricks and uh an earthquake okay so why was this mausoleum built this mausoleum was built to commemorate and represent the late mausoleus it was built and commissioned by it was built in a commission and commissioned by his sister wife um, she held him very, very close, and it's evident in how much effort was put into this giant structure. And it's genuinely, it, it, to build such a large structure for a loved one is incredible. No matter how much wealth you have, to truly break barriers on how large something truly can be is impressive, to say the least. And, well, Mazlis' sister really showed that. Although it is a little weird, the whole incest thing going on, but less on that. <laughs> so this is my map slide. So as you can see, right here is where the mausoleum at Halicarnassus is. This is the Temple of Zeus. So it's very close, although people think Turkey is very far away from Greece because it has a different, completely different culture. They're actually very, very close to each other and the Pyramid of Egypt down here. So all of these very large structures were very close to each other. The Hanging Gardens of Babylon. So all of these massive structures of like immense, like all, all seven of the ancient wonders of the world are so close to each other that realistically, you could probably take a flight between all of them and when see them all within a very short period of time, which is important. And it also shows how there was a very large distinction of how people like really viewed what was the world. Like this small air, like portion of the world contained what was known to be the greatest structures of all time, which historians will debate upon how we should really view and understand these kind of things because what happens is we only focus on this, but there are so many other great structures around the world that you can find. And thank you very much. I really appreciate it, Mr. Yonker. You're a fantastic teacher. And thank you for giving me this opportunity to explore into uh, the mausoleum at Halicarnassus. These are my works cited. I have three sources. Um, thank you very much. Stay safe.
appreciate it. Have a great winter break. Thank you, Mr. Yonker.